the mafia boss dragon of dark states has run rapid, so let's begin. But first, cards from the last few days. We start off with some dark state cards, the first one being a double rare, steam mage, a shirt off, grade 2, tanky power and skills, count guardian. If your soul has 7 or more cards, this card gives us 5k shield. Dark state soul charges a lot, so this is not an issue, especially with its second skill where auto when retired from guardian circle, you can put this to soul. Considering that we have cycle from soul in dark states, this might actually be worth running. Although I could say there are more important cards to run in dark states for your main archetypes, so play in your own leisure. Next for a Boromagus card, we got a rare, Keenly Reduri, grade 2, tanky power and skills, auto, when placed on rearguard, if your vanguard is Boromagus, cost kind of last one, choose any number of normal units from your soul, this card gets plus 5k power for each one chosen, and then return all the chosen cards to your deck, and then of course shuffle it. If those cards were right deck cards, you put them back to the right deck. So yeah, with this card, you can recycle all those normal units back from soul to your deck which could prevent you from deck out. And it also gets a huge power up on top of it. Any card that helps you recycle from using your deck a lot is always very nice for those decks. So definitely must play Moral Magus. And then we got another rare, Forbidden Evil Eye, Quen Lu. Grade 1, 8 power and skills. Auto regard cost, put this unit to soul, choose one of your rear guards, it gets plus 2k power in the end of turn. Then if you have 7 or more cards, for the battle that rear guard attack this turn, your opponent cannot call grade 1s or higher cards from their hands in garden circle. So not only increases your soul count by 1, but you give a rear guard a guard restrict which can be really nasty if it's a really big fee big rear guard. Definitely considerable. And then for rank A, we only got Orphus support this time, the first one being a rare, Carnado Fei Ryogla, grade 1 AK power and skills. Auto, when placed on rear guard, look at top 3 cards of your deck, search for one world card from among them, and add it to your hand. Put the rest of the bottom deck in any order. So it's basically like Marisma, except it's on a grade 1. But this is better than Marisma because it has a second skill where Act Rearguard. If your Vanguard is Orphis, cost Soul Blast 1, retire this unit, call Shadow Army token to Rearguard. So not only you get a search, you can replace this grade 1 8k booster to a 15k booster. And you don't need to be Abyssal Dark Knight. Yeah, definitely consider worth running an Orphis. Especially because Orphis itself doesn't really use much soul other than with your world cards. And then, we got a new world card, which is a rare, Beyond the End of Time, which is a grade 3 set order, like I said, world, and it's skillless. Play this with cost Soul Blast 2. And then, it has the skill of, Count, Order Zone, it becomes Dark Knight if you only have one world card, if you have two, it's Abyssal Dark Knight, just like every other world card. But its unique skill is, Auto, Order Zone, when your Shadow Army token is placed, the place unit gets plus 5k power into the end of turn. You just turn a Shadow Army token, which is a 15k beater booster, to 20k. And since you're going to be calling multiple of those in a turn, you can hit 40k numbers. And now since we got more ways to call them, other than with Orphis, yeah, you can spam those Shadow Army tokens. So it's a definite must play. And now to Dragon Empire. First off, we got a double rare Stealth Dragon Fushimachi Madoka. Grade 1, AK power and skills. Count, rearguard guardian. If your opponent's drop zone has 4 or more cards, this card gets plus 2k power and 5k shield. Then if there are 8 or more, gets an additional 5k shield, and it's active on both players' turns. So it could be a continuous 10k booster, or it could be a 15k shield. Nice for being generic because it can hit numbers as a booster, and also, it is considerable in overdress because if you want to boost Trickstar as well. And there's also Eugene that can be retiring a lot of stuff, which will of course build up your opponent's drop zone with it. So play this in your leisure. Next, a common Great Dragon Mashido Armor, Grade 3, Dark Empowerance goes. Count, when a normal unit is rolled on top of this card that has a different name from this unit, that ride is considered a Persona Ride. So this can be very nice for those Persona Ride heavy decks. Because if you cannot make your main plays on the first Grade 3 ride, and then you need to do your Persona Ride to make your plays, this could be a nice 5th Persona Ride option. Just place this on your ride deck so you can ride this first, and, and then you have 4 cards that you could do a Persona Ride with. Now at the moment, Dragon Empire doesn't have any Persona Ride heavy decks, so at the moment, this is not great. But eventually, there will be one. And then for an Overdress support card, we got a Double Rare Blaze Maiden Himina. Grade 1, 8 power and skills. Auto, when placed on rearguard, cost count boss 1, look at top 7 cards of your deck, choose one card with overdress ability from among them, and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. An overdress searcher. Yay! Definitely must play. 
The only thing I don't like is that it causes a counter blast just to look at top 7, but considering that we have a bunch of overdress ability cards, getting one shouldn't be that hard. And now to Stokeo, we got a rare Blooming Petal Karyophilus. Grade 2, 9 power, and skill us. Auto when placed on rearguard if you have no cards in soul, soul charge 2. It's just helpful for those soul heavy decks. And then we go to Prize Trident, which is a great one way to keep power and skill us. Auto, when your other unit attacks, if it's the 5th battle of the turn, cost put this to soul, counter charge 1. Magnolia definitely could pull this off considering that we're also attacking with the back row. And it's also nice that it puts itself from soul, so you get extra soul count, and that extra counter charge also helps. But we also got the Aqua Force related archetype in this set, so this might actually have more use for it. And yes, you could play this in Aqua Force too, but I rather run Penguins. Now to the Tuesday stream with the Mafia boss, we're going to go to his ride line with of course the starter Desire Devil Tilda, which looks a lot like Chamuske. And then to scarier Chamuske, Desire Devil Gulman, grade 1, 8 power and skills. Auto, when rolled upon by Desire Devil Bushiku, costs reveal your Creed on from your ride deck to draw a card. So basically you show your boss to your enemy to get a free card. Okay, second skill. Auto, when put from rear guard to soul by a vanguard ability, if your opponent's vanguard is greater or greater, cost card plus one until the end of turn. When your opponent would call cards from their hand to the guardian circle, they must call two or more at the same time. Yeah, for all your attacks for the turn. Now, I would say spoiler alert, your mafia boss won't really let your rear guards attack because your mafia boss is gonna handle everything himself. But if you play this in premium with some of your dark zone decks like Pale Moon and Dark Irregulars, yeah, it could be nasty. And then we go to Desire Devil Bushuku, which is a great 2 with hanging power and skill is auto. When rode upon by Abakurus Demon Dragon Greedon, cost put a card from your hand to your soul, and then search your deck for the same card name as that card and put it to your hand. And then of course shuffle your deck. You do want to set up your soul for this deck, so of course this skill definitely helps. Especially when there are already some cards you want to put to soul to trigger their abilities, and this card also has a soul ability because the second skill is count soul during your turn. If your damage zone has four more cards, if your vanguard is greed on, your vanguard gets plus 5k power. And yes, this stacks, so if you have four of these in soul, your greed on is getting a 20k buff. And getting that 5k buff by itself is already easy because you're going to be riding this with your ride deck, and putting them to soul shouldn't be that hard considering that greed on can just literally put them to soul. Spoiler alert. And also we got a lot of soul charging in dark states. And then we go to the mafia boss himself, of Arceus Demonic Dragon Greed on. Grade 3, 3 power and skill us. Auto Vanguard. If your soul has a copy of himself, your damage zone lose count becomes 7. So yeah, basically you now lose that 7 damage instead if this is on your vanguard. While you have a copy of himself to soul, which is of course not hard because you can always persona ride, and there's a lot of soul charging in this deck, and of course there's also your grey 2 that could put a card from your hand to soul as well. But the next skill, auto vanguard at the end of battle this card attack costs soul blast 2, Put 4 of your stand rear guards into your soul, stand this unit, and then if your soul has 10 or more cards, this card gets plus 15 power and then a turn. So basically, the whole gang lane, the mafia boss take his turn to beat down his enemy. So yeah, this is actually pretty decent. A lot of Dark State's card can interact with soul, which makes this pretty strong enough, especially extending your death count, and of course you got his ride line himself, that offers up more power and more skills along with it. But if you play this in premium, you can combo this with Pale Moon cards where if you put them to Soul Trigger, abilities can activate. And of course there's always Dark Irregulars as well. And another thing is, this is not once per turn. So if there's a way to call more units in mid-battle, you can get this restand again. Yeah, Mafia has to bully people, right? Overall, pretty strong. And then next week, some excitement with Flagship Dragon, the Descendant of Maelstrom. So that's it for this stream, what do you guys think about the new Mafia Boss Dragon? That's what I'm gonna call him. I say I don't really like his design other than his ride line counterparts with Chamuske, but I overall see it as a really fun deck, beating down your opponent with your Mafia Boss. Yes, it does sacrifice your rear guards, but that part where it doesn't have a once per turn clause kinda worries me because we might get some future cards where it could make this card like a raging form dragon. Especially when premium is already crazy as it is. But on that, I am excited for Maelstrom's Descendant.